Hey everybody, welcome back to Jim's Garage. In previous videos, I've showed you extensively how to create LXCs, those Linux containers. That was initially using a privileged container, which comes with some security concerns. Then I showed you how to do the same thing with an unprivileged LXC, which negates those security concerns. But also importantly, I showed you how to do hardware pass through. In those examples, I showed you how to spin up Jellyfin to make use of a GPU. And we also spun up multiple LXCs to share the same GPU and transcode at the same time. One thing you might have been wondering is, well, all of my files and folders are on my NAS, my network share. How do I get those into an LXC? Glad you asked, because that's what we're going to be covering today. So traditionally, an unprivileged LXC, you cannot mount SIFs or NFS shares within the container. So there's a clever way we can get around that and it follows very much the same process as before. Instead, we need to create some shares on the host itself, set the permissions both on the host and on the LXC, and then amend the configuration of the LXC and you should be good to go. That sounds complicated, but honestly, it's just a few commands. So I'm gonna walk you through that entire process and by the end of this, we'll have Jellyfin using our GPU and accessing files and folders from a NAS. This will also have the ability to be read-only in case you're wondering about what might happen if that was compromised. So over on my Proxmox host, you remember I set up four LXCs and had simultaneous transcoding going on using the same GPU. In this instance, I'm just gonna be focusing on this test GPU 04, that's the last one we set up, but you could replicate this process across all of your LXCs and share those network shares on any of those containers. So what's the first thing that we need to do? Well, the first thing we need to do is to go onto our LXC and we wanna hop into the console. However you want to do this, it doesn't really matter. And we're gonna create the user group that is gonna host this share. So the command to do that is group add. And in this instance, I'm adding the group 10,000 and I'm just calling it LXC underscore share. Now, why have those values been chosen? Well, that's because in an unprivileged LXC, the default group on the host, remember the LXC is mapped to a group on the host, that's my Proxmox, is 10,000. So I'm basically just mapping this container to match up the host's group ID. And the magic will be when we allow this group, this 10,000, access to a NAS, which we will mount onto the Proxmox host. So let's not get ahead of ourselves, let's create this group. So creating that group, that's been done. We now need to shut down the LXC. That's because we're gonna add our NAS to our Proxmox host. And then we're gonna edit the configuration of this LXC by going into its config file. And then we'll restart it with those changes and hopefully they'll take effect. So I'm gonna power this one down. And then I'm gonna hop over into the console for my Proxmox host. Now the command I've just shown you will be fine if you're running your Docker containers as root. But for example, if you wanted to run your Jellyfin container as a Jellyfin user, you would need to add that user to the group we just created. And that command looks like this. We did a similar thing in the last video and all we're doing is simply adding the user that you would run the container as into that group we just created. So go ahead and add all of the users you need to that group if you're not running them as root containers. Next, we need to hop into the console for our Proxmox host. In here, we simply need to mount an SMB share or whatever type of share you're using the traditional way, i.e. the same way you would do with any Linux server. And I've shown this before in previous videos, so go and check that out if you wanna know a little bit more about it. But thankfully, it's straightforward. We simply need to create a directory, create a mount in the FS tab, and then mount to that folder. So for example, I could create, make a directory, dash P means that you can make it so that you can have subdirectories. So in slash mount, slash LXC share slash NAS and then you could have multiple different folders in there so for example here there's an example of read write and execute but if you didn't want that and you just wanted read you could just change this to whatever you want so I'm going to go ahead now and create this folder location that's now created and we can validate that by doing a slash cd slash mount 
LXC shared, and then we've got this NAS underscore RWX. Great, that's all working. The next thing we need to do is actually mount our NAS to this folder location we've created. And to do that, we need to go into the FS tab, and let's do that now. Now, thankfully, we can do this from the terminal, if you wanted, by using this echo command. And this is simply going to write an entry into your etc fs tab file. So, for example, here, you would simply need to change this location, i.e. this one here, to be the IP address and the NAS location for your files. And you'd need to change the username and the password to whatever you have. So, assuming you've done that, I'm going to hit return. And then now if I go into my etc fs tab file, so let's open that with a text editor. It would look something like this. So I've got two there because I've already created it. But as I mentioned before, I've just simply added the IP address here, the share name and then the folder location on that share. So test-lxc is a folder that I've created on my NAS and I've put in the good old Big Book Bunny video, which will be then mounting into Jellyfin to show that it's running off a NAS. So simply change the folder locations that you want, change that IP address to whatever suits for you and put in your username and password. Once you've done that, we're gonna do a control O and save it and we're on to the next step. So the next command we need is to mount. So what this is saying is we're going to mount the share that we just created in the above command and that's the one that you saw in the FS tab. So this will now mount the NAS to that folder location. So if we run that we can see now that we've got the notification that's taken place. We might want to do a system CTL to reload the daemon to make sure that it's using the most recent version of the FS tab. Now that's done, I should be able to navigate to that folder. So cd slash mnt slash lxc shares and then nas underscore rwx. And if I do an ls, yeah, you can see I've got my big book bunny there and a test text file. I created these earlier before the video, but they just look something like this. So here you can see on my Windows machine, I've got those two files. This is on my nas. If I create a new text file, we can call this one test2 and if we open that up I'll add some text to this that's saved now hopefully if we do a refresh you can now see we've got test2 and if we want to do a test of what it can see we can see that it's spit out there test.2.txt at the beginning. So we know that it's got read permissions as well. So the last piece of the puzzle now is to edit the configuration file for this LXC. So let me clear this. And if you remember previously, it was in CD slash ETC slash PVE slash LXC. And if I do an LS there, you'll see all of the configuration files for those respective LXCs. So if I open this with an editor for 104, that's the one that we're going to be doing in this video. You can see all of the bits that we set up last time. So we added all the ID maps and this is what allowed us to have GPU pass through that's shared with all the other LXCs in an unprivileged fashion. And we simply need to add another permission set into here. So I'll show you what that looks like now. The command you run, you can either edit it directly into this file or if you wanted to, and maybe I'll script this in the future, you can copy the following command. So in this instance, we're simply echoing, we're writing into that file. And I'm saying that mount LXC shares NAS underscore RWX, that's what we created, is going to be mounted at slash mount slash NAS within the LXC. And I've set read only to true. You can delete that if you want, and that will give you read, write and execute permissions. I've only done read only because typically I like to lock things down. If this is my Jellyfin server and I'm giving people remote access, it's probably a good idea to lock it down. That will mean that things like deleting from Jellyfin won't work, but I'll let you change that to whatever you want. The key thing at the end is we need to change this ID file here. So I'm going to change this to 104. So when I run this command, that's now been written. And if I go back now and edit this file, 
you'll see that that line is now at the bottom, which is great. That's exactly what we wanted. If you have snapshots on your LXC, like I demonstrated in the previous video, for example, if I edit my 103, which had them before, you'll see that it creates this before boot is what I call the snapshot, a subsection here. Now, if you do this command, it's going to write it to that snapshot and it's not going to write it to the current. That's just because it appends it to the file. So in that instance, you will need to go in and manually edit to make sure it's in the right position. And to refresh your memory, it's here. It's at the bottom of this part. If you've got any green writing there, that's a snapshot. Don't add it to that section. So now that we've got this in here, we can exit that. And fingers crossed, we can now boot up our LXC. And hopefully those files will be available to this container. So if I log in, let's now navigate to that folder. So cd slash mnt slash nas. Let's do an ls. Excellent. We've got all of those files. So if I also do a cat test2, we can see that it can read it. It's got that test.2.txt there. So what does that mean? Well, it now means that let's go to our home directory and let's go into our Jellyfin and then let's edit the Docker Compose file for it. So now what we need to do is we need to go to this folder location here and maybe add another one. So slash MNT slash NAS. And then we're going to do, I don't know, films two. Now, hopefully anything in that folder should be available now to this Jellyfin container. So I'm going to save this. I'll come out and then I'll do a docker compose up dash D dash dash force recreate. Hopefully that will start the container up. And if we do an IPA, I'm going to go to this IP address here, this 7.143. And hopefully I can now add a new folder location. Let's check that out. So here is exactly where we left off in the past tutorial. So if we go to the dashboard and if we go to libraries, let's add a new library and hopefully we can see films too. Yes, okay, there's films too. Let's click okay. Hopefully in films too, we're gonna find Big Buck Bunny. So if I now go back home and look in movies too, Yes, we've got Big Bug Bunny. Excellent. So, icing on the cake, let's hit play. And it's playing. And let's just test for the sake of it. Yep. Transcoding is still working. If we change that. Brilliant. So now you have an LXC that's unprivileged with GPUs that are shared between multiple containers and is running files from a NAS. So thanks for watching everybody. Hopefully that gives you a valuable last piece of the puzzle in setting up your LXCs to host and share files from your network. This will be great for things like Jellyfin or Plex or anything where you need large data storage elsewhere on your network. Let me know if this is something that you're going to be using and what you're using it for in the description below. As always, thanks for watching. Hit that like, hit that subscribe and I'll see you on the next one. Take care everybody.